awesome to be here today to really recognize this milestone and uh, path that we think has a lot of promise in plug-in hybrid technology. It's just five months ago when we were together um, announcing this partnership and we said this is great combining the technology that, uh, that Southern Cal Edison has on energy management with the technology that Ford has on hybrids and to partner together and figure out how we can change this business model. This is the first of 20 vehicles that we'll be delivering and we're quite proud of it because it gets two-thirds better fuel economy in urban driving so it's something that we think is going to have a lot of promise but of course there's a lot of work to do and that's how working together we'll explore the commercialization of these batteries how they work with the grid and in doing that I think a real good chance to see how these two great companies can come together and change the way we do business. So we're very happy to be here and certainly very happy to be part of this partnership and more important to turn over the keys because it does mark a milestone for us and the first of many when we'll be telling you more about what we're doing. So We are very excited to take the keys. Um, we are very excited because this is part of the solution to the future. If you look at where we need to go as a country in terms of you know, independence of Ford oil, in terms of greenhouse gas, we're looking at these vehicles as being a key to that. If you look at the electric grid, these vehicles can be charged at night without adding any power plants or any infrastructure. It's really an important part of going forward. In addition to that, in the future, we also think that these vehicles, plus battery storage, will be able to feed back into the grid when we have peak, peak time events when the grid is overloaded. So, at, as well as with our advanced metering where we'll be able to send price signals to customers. So this is part of what you see as the energy solution future for our country. And we think electricity and use of the grid for fueling vehicles is a big part of that. So this is a great partnership and we look very much forward to success and driving away the car. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a program that extends and when we announced it. It uh, really goes throughout 2008 and 2009 calendar year. And what we plan to do is really take advantage of the learning. So it's not that we're going out and building all 20 identical. There's research going on here. We're learning some things. So we have uh, these planned in, in groups so we can get the feedback and then update the vehicles. And really targeting them in 2009 in collaboration with Southern Cal Edison when they're done with the internal fleet testing, it will go on actual customer hands. So we'll get customer feedback at that point. D different battery types? We may be looking at different battery types as well. It's really dependent upon the supply uh, base capability and uh, really trying to you know, determine whether we want to use these this 20 unit fleet to validate different batteries. What we really do is Southern Cal Edison also has an enormous amount of test capability of battery systems. So I think what we're doing there is maybe more of a battery system test in the lab environment. And uh, our intent initially is, is looking at maybe one or two types of battery, uh, but that just adds work without necessarily giving us more knowledge. And what's so, in this one? Uh, we, we have a high energy lithium ion pack in this vehicle. Did you say a what 10 kilowatt is all in here, or is it one of the ones in here? I, we are not <laughs> announcing at this You're time. Okay, cool. Yep. Not announcing at the start. Cobalt type? This is too far. Pardon? Type of lithium ion, cobalt type? <laughs> we are not <laughs> announcing at this time. <laughs> but it's a 10 kilowatt hour battery. Okay, good. Thank you. This is Susan Siski. She just uh, drove up in the Ford plug-in uh, escape hybrid and helped hand over the keys to uh, the people at Southern California Edison. Um, what, what, what's the, what, what are you thinking right now, handing over this car to some a test fleet? Right, well this is really a milestone for us because it's one of the paths of technology we're pursuing and so five months ago we partnered with Southern Cal Edison so this is really the delivery of the first of 20 vehicles. So we're really excited about it. Um, this has a lot of promise but one of the issues we have is affordability so we're hoping that as we work together their expertise is in energy management our expertise is in hybrids, and so we merge these two companies together, and hopefully we can help commercialize the, the plug-in hybrid business. That's the one that I thought was really interesting. So you can raise the price of gas, and you can lower the price of electricity if you wanted, but then you'll to calculate, yeah, and just see. And this will show our best uh, fuel economy and everything. So We have a place in Hawaii. And it's that much per kilowatt hour. Really? It's 42 cents a kilowatt hour. Oh, wow. 
So that what? would be a really yeah. nice savings. Yeah, that's so right. Press and hold it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Nope. What it was. I'll put it yeah. back. Okay. I don't know what well, I don't know what they had it on there, actually. Twelve. We did twelve. Oh, we did twelve. Okay. And wow. I don't know what gas is here. Is it a dollar? Uh, uh, three. Three thirty. Oh, really? If you're if you're lucky. Okay, so we'll raise that up a bit. Oh, and then anyway. it's going to average it based on that. Yeah, and then, so then you can, as you're driving, it'll figure out gallons used and the trip savings and whole trip cost. And Look so at this, the you. best it's received yeah. so far is 137 miles per gallon. Yeah. The average, average is 36. 36.2. Right now it's But it's doing an average based on sitting still also. Yes, exactly, because we got the, the vehicle running and stuff. So anyway. One of the things that you were showing off inside of the car is a little screen that uh, you can input either the electricity cost or the fuel cost, and the car will do a lot to tell the driver uh, how much fuel they're saving or how much uh, money they're saving. Um, what can you tell us about that system, that sort of interactivity with the energy prices around you? Well, one of the benefits of having all this electronics in the car is to have a display that tells a lot of things. It shows how the hybrid flow is working, when you're working just on the battery, when you're working with both. But we also put a little trip computer in there and said, you know, we'll help you calculate your savings depending on the price of gas and the price of electricity, it'll compute how much you saved in that particular day and how you were driving. So it's a little kind of a fun, I would say a, a toy, but it's a little bit of a informative uh, information so that people can really understand what's happening mm -hmm. in the vehicle itself. It's kind of a very modern version of keeping a record of how much you paid for gas, how many miles you drove, and then figuring out your own miles per gallon, your own fuel cost that you know people may be used to from previous cars. This is a, a much more updated version of that. And it's, it would be impossible to do because you, know, you can't tell how much electricity you're sucking when you're plugging in the car you, and, right. and things like that. And you know what's fun about that too is when we're showing the system interaction, a lot of times people see that as a real advantage because what they're looking at is there are times that maybe you kind of back off on the gas a bit and be in all the electric mode longer. So it's, it's good information, good feedback. Mm -hmm. And it was that coming from also there's a screen that people may be familiar with if they've ridden in or driven a Prius where the arrows are going showing yes. you which energy is going where. This, this uh, car also has one of those. It does, right. And uh, with the addition of the plug-in capability, that's even more information that people can have. As uh, Southern California Edison takes this car and then 19 more over the next, was it, few years they'll right. be coming? Yes. Um, what are some of the things that Ford will be really looking for in the data that SCE will be collecting? Well, one of the things we're trying to understand is customer usage and how we relate to the smart grid. Um, one thought we have is in order to reduce the cost of uh, plug-in hybrids, as you know, a plug-in really requires the lithium ion battery, which is a lot more expensive than today's nickel metal hydride battery. Different types of battery, one being more of a storage battery, one being a power in storage, and then, and so we're trying to get the combination there. And as a result of that, the affordability becomes very key. So if we can figure out how to make the house and the vehicle kind of as a system, where when you're plugging into the grid, at certain times you might be giving power back to the grid, you might be taking power from the grid, so we're going to collect that type of data. And because the battery technology is so new, we're going to be building these in series so that we'll build a few, take data and learn from it. The battery technology will be different, maybe a different supplier, and we'll pro progress it along. So we're hoping to learn a lot about customer usage, about the grid, and about the vehicle.